This is Corvettes at Carlisle, an 11 year tradition that has become one of the most successful annual tributes ever created in honor of the car which has been an American institution for four decades, the Chevrolet Corvette. Carlisle Productions presents a number of automotive events at the Carlisle, Pennsylvania fairgrounds each year. But Corvettes at Carlisle is perhaps the one that captures the greatest amount of enthusiast interest. Thanks in large part to the enormous reverence which Chevy's fiberglass sensation firmly possesses. Corvettes at Carlisle 1992 is held on August 28th, 29th, and 30th. And during those three days, an estimated 3,000 Corvettes converged on this quiet Pennsylvania town, earning this event the nickname, the Woodstock for Corvettes. Then there were the spectators. Close to 40,000 people attended Corvettes at Carlisle. Some Corvette owners and some not, but all genuine devotees of this all-American classic. There's always a massive vendor area at the Carlisle show where even the most hard-to-find Corvette part or accessory can usually be found. There was a car corral where some 300 Corvettes were on display for sale. And of course, the show itself, where entrants could compete in the fun display. Here, invited guests and celebrities would choose the cars they liked best, based more or less on personal preference. And the National Council of Corvette Clubs Concours, where skilled judges would closely scrutinize cars and evaluate them in a number of judging categories. But the 1992 Corvettes at Carlisle boasted a special feature of particular note, a tribute to the Corvettes from Callaway, and the appearance of Reeves Callaway himself all the way from Old Lyme, Connecticut. And we'll be talking to Reeves a little bit later. And as has been the custom over the past 10 years at Corvettes at Carlisle, everyone had the opportunity to win their very own Corvette. The car to be given away in 1992 was this ultra-straight 1973 Roadster, a car which will undoubtedly enjoy increasing collector status, not only because it's a Roadster, but the 73s were the last year for chrome rear bumpers and the first year for the rubber front end. Before we take you all around the Carlisle Fairgrounds to show you some of the highlights of this fantastic event, let's talk to Chip and Bill Miller the event promoters, and Corvette enthusiasts. In fact, Chip owns several very valuable Corvettes and each year creates a display called Chip's Choice, showcasing certain Corvettes of significant distinction. We asked them to give us a historical perspective on what Corvettes at Carlisle is all about. Our first uh, Corvettes at Carlisle was 11 years ago, 1982. Uh, one of the ways we developed the show and really brought a good number of people in for the very first time, other than our reputation, which at that time was uh, seven or eight years old. We've been successfully doing shows. What we did, we gave away a 1982 Collector Edition Corvette, brand spanking new. And it brought the people. And there's a lot of, a lot of reasons around this. Uh, we wanted to keep the people here through Sunday afternoon. And the only way we felt we could do this, we couldn't tell them to stay, but if we gave them free chances at a car, we figured they'd stay. It was 2020, we were right on the ball when we came up with that concept. That's only a real small portion of our show, however. That, people, that would just be a, a drawing if that's all there was. We have flea market, where you can go buy any parts for your car, literature, memorabilia, anything having to do with a Corvette. Car corral is real popular too. Uh, our car corral is strictly for Corvettes. There's, uh, we don't allow any other type of car in the car corral at the Corvette show. So anybody's looking for a Corvette, whether it's an early model, a mid-year car, late model car, uh, all of them are welcome. And there's a lot of cars bought and sold at the car corral. It's really amazing. We do all the notary service for people, anything that they want as far as uh, temporary tags and insurance and everything they can get right here. And we even have financing on the spot for uh, if somebody needs financing to buy a car. So it's and with our comp check service, we have a cash advance if people need cash to also to help buy the car. Works out pretty good. The, uh, there's Corvettes everywhere here. 
Bill just mentioned the car corral. We have all Corvette parking, which is a, literally a show into itself. Thousands of Corvettes at one time on one field, drive in, park, talk, party, whatever you want to do. Next step up is what we call a fun display. This is on our infield. This year there's approximately 300 Corvettes in the fun display. Fun display is a low-key concourse. You come, you wash your car off. Doesn't have to be spit and polish. There can be some uh, uh, stones in your treads. It's not a real serious thing. You just come, it's, it's a, an elevated party. But along with it, we have 25 uh, editors, celebrities, GM executives, restorers, and whatever, they go out and select one car of their choice. This happens on Saturday afternoon and awards are given on Sunday in a procession of 25 cars that parade around our stage. On the other side of that show field is the Serious Concourse. It's produced by National Council of Corvette Clubs and judged by York County Corvette Club. Uh, there, there's approximately 100 cars and they are scrutinized all the way through. They, they, they look at the tire treads, they look in the crevices of the uh, frames. It is a very, very serious concourse. They also have a class, what they call wash and show. So it's not, it, it, it fills another gap. Literally, if you have a, a car which qualifies nationwide as a best in show car, you can bring it to Carlisle and do very well with it. If you have a driver that has some primer spots, still want to be there to meet the celebrities, there's a fun display for it. It's all real simple, easy, fun. And fun is really what we're trying to do here. It's fun for Corvette owners. We asked Chip to tell us a little bit about some of the Corvettes in his Chip's Choice display. Right now, we're, we're sitting here surrounded by 15 incredibly special Corvettes. Uh, we call them Chip's Choice. Uh, this is something we started three years ago. And these are all contacts of mine, friends of mine with very, very special cars. But as I look down the row here, I start off with a 1953 from a very fresh restoration. It's the first time shown to the public. Next to it, there's a total running chassis, motor, dr complete drivetrain for 1953 Corvette. It's just like somebody lifted the body and interior off. You can see what the basis of the car was. Next to that's a 1962 Corvette with under 30,000 miles being shown by its original owner. Next to that's a 63 fuel injected Corvette. Then we enter the uh, 67 era. Of that, there's some very, very special cars, but most dominant is the car in the center. It's a 1967 race prepared Corvette. It's the only mid year car, mid year meaning 63 to 67 Corvette, that has raced at the famed Le Mans. It entered the 24 hour of Le Mans in 1967. It, uh, broke after 12 hours of competition, in which point it was dominating its class. Uh, very significant car in that also it's an L88. That's the highest horsepower ever produced in a, in a Corvette. And this is one of 20 produced in 1967. The factory wouldn't produce this car with a radiator shroud. So in, in essence, your first stoplight, the car would overheat and cook. They discouraged its street use other ways too. It did not have a heater and it did not have a radio. There was no amenity in this car. But this car is probably the finest restoration unequivocally that I've seen. It's a uh, dynamite restoration of uh, one of the most significant Corvettes of all times. There's a series of brand sports produced in 63 which are valued by collectors today at a higher price than this. They're in the million dollar range, million dollars plus. This car is probably uh, one half to three quarters of a million dollars in value. We have a Callaway reunion going on. We have 65 Callaways registered and here for this show. They're out in the infield in a special parking area. Along with that, we have five Callaways down at the end of the row here. The very first one produced, a 1988 35th edition, which is a very special car. I think there was only four or five of them made by Callaway. We have an IMSA supercar race car. I'm the owner of that particular car. Uh, it's the only Callaway that's ever competed on, uh, on a racetrack. Uh, there's the Sledgehammer, which is a 254 mile an hour Callaway in street dress. It was driven from Old Lyme, Connecticut to Ohio, 
driven at 254 mile an hour on a closed track, turned around, air conditioning on, drove it back to Old Lyme, Connecticut. A very, very special car. It's been covered in literally every publication that deals with automobiles. And then finally, we have Otis Chandler's Speedster, which is designed by Reeves Calloway and Paul Deutschman. They are both here in attendance. Uh, and this is the very first of 10 very, very significant collector, collectible cars. It was time to talk to the man responsible for the spectacular Corvettes, which bear his name, Reeves Calloway, whose quiet, understated personality belies the awesomely powerful Corvettes he designs and produces. We asked him to talk about his most notorious Corvette, the Sledgehammer. Magazines love to talk about who went fastest. We kept getting invited to these kinds of top speed shootouts. The trouble was that we didn't design the car to go fast at the exclusion of everything else. We were just hired by Chevrolet to make some powerful Corvettes. One of the functions of making a powerful late model Corvette is that it has a very high terminal velocity. The standard everyday Callaway Corvette that we make goes 190 miles an hour. Nobody can use that, but the magazines love it because it's a point of numbers, right? Everybody kept shooting for us as the consistent winner of all these magazine events. Somebody would show up and they'd come this far from going faster than we did. So we knew that what we had to do was build a car that nobody could beat unless we wanted them to. The result of all of that experimenting is the sledgehammer. We needed a car that had an adjustable top speed so that regardless of who went fast, we could always go faster. And those were a good set of instructions. You know, Chevrolet says, if you're gonna go to a road test, make sure that you come home the winner. So he said, yes, sir. So what you got here is a 900 horsepower Corvette that is built and tested to go 250 miles an hour. That was the bogey for the assignment. It actually went 254.76, but that's because we miscalculated a little bit. But that's not the real news. The real news is that it's easy to make a car go fast, but it's not a real car. You don't want to spend any more than five minutes in it. This is a real car. This is the kind of car that you give the keys to your mom and she can drive it to the store. It starts, it idles, it's quiet, it just so happens that if you hold the throttle down for long enough, you'll go 255 miles an hour. <laughs> but the radio works, the air conditioning works, it rides comfortably. It's an everyday street machine. Most, most cars are, are trailered to the event, right? We said, screw that. Drive the car from Connecticut to the test track in Ohio. There's only one test track in the United States that's big enough to do that kind of speed safely. That's at the Transportation Research Center in Ohio. It's a 750-mile trip from Connecticut. We drove the car out there. We tested it at its top speed. And usually when a car is going its top speed, you expect something to break. Nothing broke. It was relatively undramatic. We just drove it back to Connecticut, just like you would expect out of a normal street car. We asked Reeves for some of the performance specs on the sledgehammer. To say we were impressed would be a glaring understatement. Well, this car goes uh, zero to 100 miles an hour in two and a half seconds. It goes uh, from 100 to 200 miles an hour in the next seven seconds. There's nothing like your basic 900 horsepower car. <laughs> now that Callaway has completed production of the twin turbo Corvettes, he has now moved on to what are called the Callaway Supernatural Corvettes. Callaway has begun production of LT1 and ZR1 Corvettes that have had 100 horsepower increases over their stock specs through computer control cylinder head modifications, a Callaway exclusive, plus changes to camshafts, exhaust systems, and electronic engine management. No turbos, but a huge increase in performance. 
Another person who is more than familiar with Corvette high performance was on hand at Corvettes at Carlisle. His name has become synonymous with championship showroom stock racing. Kim Baker, and then we the SCCA the World Challenge champion and longtime Corvette racing. racer and, and builder, spoke of his racing experiences and told us about the Corvettes he had brought along to display. The car over here is the 1991 champion, and the car next to it is the new ZR1, which is a 1992, and it's had its debut race in Mostport 24 hours, which it won, and that's the biggest race in our series of the year. You know, we have a, probably a 25-member team for a race like that. We have a, a crew chief and a strategist and people who keep track of times and a pit crew changes tires and there's four drivers and it's a real hard thing to organize. But once it's organized right, things can run really fluid and smooth and that race at Mosport was the most fluid race I've ever seen. All we did with that car was stop change the tires, put in the gas, and go. Other teams are stopped there repairing cars, changing motors, changing transmissions, and the ZR1 just kept ticking. Never lost a beat in the whole race. Let's hop aboard the Carlisle trolley and take a short hop around the Corvettes at Carlisle show area and see just a sampling of the countless Corvettes attending the 1992 event.
Meanwhile, over on the fairground stage, one of several special events within an event was about to take place. The Genteel 3 Rear End Contest. Uh, in our editorial opinion, there's no need for us to go into a detailed explanation as to what the contestants were being evaluated on. Uh, here, however, are just a few highlights of the competition. I love you too. <laughs> I'm from Morgantown, West Virginia. My name is Tammy and I'm 25 and I love red Corvettes. Yes! <laughs> Hello, I'm Pam. Um, I'm 26 years old and I'm from originally from Kansas. So I'm a long ways away from home. And, uh, I like to ride in red Corvettes. Now let's spend a few minutes admiring some bodywork of a far different kind. We were just in time to catch the 65 some odd Callaway owners who had attended Corvettes at Carlisle as they were posing near their cars for a group photograph taken from an overhead camera. They then honored us with a special message. Callaway owners are wild about wheels. Many of the Corvettes which arrived at Carlisle were towed in on trailers by their owners. Others arrived on flatbed trucks. Others were trucked in by big rigs, such as this one belonging to Intercity Line, the official transporter for Corvettes at Carlisle. And many were driven, such as these ZR1s, having come from cities, towns, and states representing every compass point. The ZR1 Corvette is unquestionably the most talked about and lust-inducing production car ever to roll out of a Chevy showroom. There were quite a few at Carlisle, and we talked to Larry Miro, the president of the ZR1 Registry. Well, the uh, registry was started last year here at Carlisle when my wife and I walked around with uh, t-shirts that said, ask us about the ZR1 Registry. And when we left, we had six members. And now we're a year later and we have almost 600 members. So we've really grown during this year. We have a newsletter and uh, we've had some gatherings. This is our second gathering here. Uh, we had a first one, a Memorial Day weekend up at Lime Rock. We had 30 Corvettes and 17 ZR1s. And today we're going to have more than that. It's a you know, limited production car. Uh, it's a very uh, high performance automobile. And most of the owners take a great deal of pride in owning such a vehicle and take carrying such a vehicle. And most of them enjoy using their vehicle. Well, the biggest thing about the ZR1 is uh, the 32-valve aluminum engine that it has that makes about 375 horsepower. It's a very high-performance car with uh, exquisite handling. Uh, it's amazing, having owned a lot of older Corvettes, the performance that we can get out of these cars and yet still get over 20 miles to the gallon most of the time. Uh, I drove in from New York and I got about 22 miles to the gallon, uh, over 300 miles. So uh, it's, a, it's a car that can be autocrossed, it's a car that can be rallied, and it's a car that can be driven every day. 
Over at the fun display, we ran into Paul Zazzarini, editor of Corvette Fever magazine, who was invited to be one of the judges. One of the things that a lot of Corvette enthusiasts enjoy doing is restoring the cars and going into competition and winning trophies. And things get a little on the edge sometimes. People are, are very intense about it. This is a lot more fun. It's more laid back, and, and everybody, you just park your car, walk away, enjoy the show. You don't have to worry about, you know, concourse judging or anything like that. And this is really the mainstream of the Corvette hobby, right where we're standing, because most of these cars are driven and enjoyed. They're not on trailers, and they're not cleaned with toothbrushes and uh, 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 diapers. Uh, so consequently, those cars are beautiful to look at. And I always appreciate it, and we enjoy showing them in the magazine. But this is the mainstream of the Corvette hobby, and this is where it's really fun. Uh, I'm honored to be one of the judges for the event. And Everyone, the prerequisites for judging are really quite simple. Uh, go out and find the car that you'd really like to have yourself. Uh, that's the approach that I like to take. So I'll walk the aisles and go back and forth and look at the cars. It's really quite hard because there's so many neat cars here. Uh, but my ultimate decision is this is the one I'd really like to have in my garage and enjoy driving. So that's the criteria that I use. Each of the judges have their own. We spoke briefly with one of the judges of the concourse, Ed Wentz of the York County Corvette Club. The car show area which we have here are mainly uh, cars that are competing for points through the National Council of Corvette Clubs, which accumulate over a year. There is a $1,000 cash prize sponsored by Carlisle Productions and Apple Chevrolet, but put up the money for the cash prize. And then that is a usually awarded by some type of celebrity uh, in the Corvette world that picks that special prize. Basically, in this type of show, it's uh, mainly the cleanliness of the car and the extent of uh, the car's uh, appeal from the frame the whole way up through the engine compartment interior and, of course, the exterior of the car. We have uh, race-prepared, modified, and custom classes. We have a wash and show class, which basically they park their car and the exterior and interior is judged. We go to a street and show class, which is uh, a step up or the notch up from the wash and show, which we judge the engine compartment. Then we have concourse prepared cars, which are mainly trailered in cars, cars that have been restored to the hill and that type. On Saturday evening, one of the most highly anticipated activities held in conjunction with Corvettes of Carlisle takes place in the very heart of town itself, the Corvette Parade, in which 400 Corvettes cruise down the main street of Carlisle, with thousands of excited residents lining the curbs to welcome this incredible procession of power. Let's watch some of the action from this year's parade. After the hundreds of Corvettes come to a stop, the awestruck spectators get a close-up look at each and every Corvette.
The entire main street is blocked off, and a live band begins to crank up and provide the tunes for Pennsylvania's biggest block party. And there will be even more excitement still to come at Corvettes at Carlisle. The Miss Corvettes at Carlisle beauty pageant had assembled over a dozen young ladies on the fairground stage, hoping to win the approval of the enthusiastic onlookers and the coveted crown, plus $500 in cash. The competition was heated. Once all the contestants had been voted for by way of audience applause, the pageant officials were left with the task of objectively deciding who had received the most fervent response. And here she is, contestant Lisa, Miss Corvettes at Carlisle 92. After a menacing gesture to our videographer, she shows us that she definitely dressed for the occasion. Mike's comment is it looks like... On Sunday, it's time for the long-awaited award ceremonies. The top finishers in each class are given what may be the most okay. prestigious recognition they may ever enjoy as a Corvette owner, an award from Corvettes at Carline. Chip Miller MCs the ceremonies and the numerous invited guests who have chosen their favorite cars in the fun display category explain their reasons for choosing the cars they select and then award the proud owners their trophies. Here are just some of the awards presented. This was Mike Yeager's choice. It's owned by Dan Belcher. And Dan, thank you for bringing it. We'll bring your award out to you. When I saw the yellow toy here, I said, now here's a guy who has the right attitude. <laughs> Corvettes are supposed to be fun. How could you not look at this car and say, that looks like a ball? It was that simple. My favorite car. Corvette after Corvette proudly rolled into the limelight at Carlisle. The winners and runners-up in the many different classes of competition in which they had been chosen best. It was a moment that each and every one of these owners would thoroughly savor for many years to come and make even stronger the bond that has united them with the cars they are steadfastly devoted to. And after all was said and done, the car which received best of show at Corvettes at Carlisle for 1992 was this one. John Mars 1969 ZL1 Corvette, a most rare and desirable Stingray. The car was originally purchased by me in uh, December of 68 for a race car, uh, which was sponsored by Gulf Oil Corporation. We raced it for three years and it uh, parked it in 1972 when golf got out of racing and uh, it's one of about seven that were built with the engine, an all aluminum 427. And I never looked at the car again till 89 when somebody just asked me if I still had it and of course it was sitting out in the truck garage and we got it back out and all we do is show it now. Almost 2,750 miles on it now, quarter mile at a time. It's the first time I ever won Breast of Show, though. I flabbergasted. Believe me. It was time to bring another Corvettes at Carlisle to a close. Three days of camaraderie, companionship, and friendly competition among the world's most passionate Corvette lovers. We hope you've enjoyed these video highlights of Corvettes at Carlisle 1992. And we'll be looking for you next year at the 12th annual edition of this remarkable summer celebration when once again, thousands will gather to show their affection and appreciation 
for America's only true sports car.